yes. we've got a guest coming in here and uh and as we welcome adam lefko to the proceedings we uh alert you to the fact there's only one rule adam in the steam room keep a towel on yes they oh he's been watching the steam room are you a loyal steamer I am. I have also, I've been on the voicemail before. So this is technically my second time. So this is quite an honor to be here in person. Oh, I remember. I remember the other one, sort of. How you been, man? You got, you got one more Tuesday of uh, studio work with, uh, with D Wade and Candace Parker and Shaq. Is that all you got next Tuesday? Is that it? That's it. May 11th. Man. And then we're done. I know. Feels like part of my life is going away. Yeah, it's called marriage. You get married too. That part of your life is going away. That's happening too. Uh, we'll we'll get into that in a minute. Let's let's talk the show, man. Tell me how the the progression has been on that show for you, from uh, sitting in that chair for the first time and getting to know those guys uh, on a regular basis, and, uh, and and what it's been like for you. Yeah, I mean that first time we had never been in the same room together before, like forty seconds before air. So like Shaq walked out that first time and I was like, Hey Shaq, Lefko. And he was like, yeah. And I was like, Oh, this is how we're doing it. Okay. Uh, and then this year, to be honest, if, if I'm going to be really honest, I think in a weird way, uh, the COVID protocols helped us develop because the backstage of inside an NBA on TNT is a picnic. You know, you got the makeup room, you got people in the, in the clubhouse and there's so many personalities and I kind of think for us, if I'm going to be honest, it was just us four and we would just sit there all night and we, we just really started talking to each other and telling stories. And, and you guys know when you're walking out from the back and, and D Wade and Shaq are cracking up and me and Candace and the back is the show. And so I think for us really getting a chance to bond a lot has been a lot of fun. And then sitting in that chair I have a better understanding now of how quick pregame goes and halftime goes and what you actually need to know for those moments. So instead of like studying every single thing and, and know, okay, what do I need right here? But it's, it's been fun and, and Ernie to, to really just become friends with like D Wade and hang out with him and, and text him with Candace all the time and feeling like getting closer with Shaq. It's, it's just fun because it, that's your teammates. It's your brothers and your sisters. And that's, that's, what's been so cool. It shows, man. It's, uh, it's you've, you've done an outstanding job on that thing, man. It's a great watch, man. I appreciate you. Well, but let me just say this, you know, Adam, I, listen, I love Shaq, Candace, and D Wade. They do a good job, but Adam, you are very talented. And, and the reason I know that you, know, you talk about, I just met those guys and we showed up and it worked and that's got a lot to do with you. Cause remember, I, I remember when I first told somebody about you, I says, because we, we kind of did the same thing at the match, the first match in Vegas. Yeah. And I, and you got me and Sam Jackson and, and you're like, okay, I'm with Charles Barker, and Sam Jackson. It was such a natural, smooth thing. And listen, I get intimidated around Sam. I'm not gonna lie, cause like I said, oh, that's Sam Jackson right there. And I've been working with him for five or six years <laughs> and it was so seamless. And I said, man, this dude is good. He wasn't like, he did his thing. He was funny, he was spontaneous. And I said, when you walk out with big personalities like myself and Sam and you got Pat Perez there also, and then you like, no, I can handle this. I said, you make sure you pat yourself on the back for being how talented you are. I appreciate you. And I, the four people that are on this call right now, like I've done so many shows with cap. So I got my reps in with cap. TK was one of the first people after that first show that kind of called me and was like, you, you got it. You're good. He's like, just do you. And I think sometimes you need to hear that Chuck is you've always been so complimentary and Ernie for me, like I, I got a, I got a time hop on Instagram and it showed the picture from six years ago when we got to hang out at the Emmys that day. The, the credit to Ernie is, is I never want to copy somebody's style because you have to be you. But I, when I tell people that Ernie is the GOAT, it's because he treats people and the job with the utmost respect. And what I learned that day, it wasn't even just seeing him go on stage and do the whole thing with Stuart Scott. Ernie, I don't even know if you remember, we had like some kid walking us around. And you asked him his name and you asked him about himself. And I watched the impact that you had on that kid. And I was like, okay, that's one way that you can carry yourself. And when I watched the Thursday show, I, I, 
I'm not going to lie. I watched the March Madness, and Ernie had one after the, 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 a big upset. He brought in, he didn't introduce Chuck, Kenny, Andy. He just kind of navigated in. And I'm always learning from Ernie because there's so many different ways to do it. And you just, you, you create this gravitas and this energy. And I know that for me, it's, I'm just, I'm, I'm learning, man, because you really are the best to ever do it, Ernie, but you're also like one of the best people to ever do it. And so I just, for me, man, I feel like I'm your guy's teammate. Like, I feel like I'm a rookie on the bench and you got, you know what I mean? Like I'm young Chuck and you guys are Moses and doc. And I'm just kind of looking and being like, okay, this is cool. I, I see what you guys are doing here. I like it. Oh, it's, it's great having you on the team too, man. And uh, folks out there have been following you for a long time, long before you started doing Tuesdays on TNT and, Oh, that's, you know, but it's all been, it's all been an amazing ride. Hasn't it? I mean, cause you know, a lot of us get, you know, our, our same kind of starts in local TV and are kind of hoping that man, maybe someday I can take this up the next rung and the next rung and the next rung, but talk to, talk to folks about your, about your local TV days and, and include in there, please, how you came up with the Seinfeld show. Mm. Uh, you know, you did an entire sports cast all based on Seinfeld references and the thing just blew up. So we had a tornado here in Atlanta on Monday and it brought me back to my first job in Hastings, Nebraska, where I was a news reporter. I was a one man band. What are you I, laughing about, Chuck? Hastings, Nebraska. Yeah. Come on. No, you know, it, it was so cool. Uh, we had Jimmy Kimmel on. And, you know, he's Jimmy Kimmel now, like he's Adam Lefko. And we always talk about people have no idea how hard these guys work. They're like, oh, Adam just went to New York and went to Turner. Like, no, when he said Hastings, uh, Nebraska, I was like, damn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so what happened in Hastings? Well, I was a one man band news reporter and I used to cover tornadoes. Like we did a, I did a three part series on tornado chasing and I watched a dude punch a tornado which is when you drive through a tornado and his back window got smashed and i'm shooting it from like the other car and i i think back and i'm like what was i doing <laughs> you know po population twenty five thousand. i was getting paid eighteen thousand five hundred dollars a year you're writing your own stuff like to, to and i wasn't even allowed to do sports you know on saturdays i would have an off day and I would go with the sports guy to cover the Huskers and Indomitian Sue back then just to like see what a press conference was like and see like, how do you interview an athlete? Uh, then I went to Louisville, Kentucky after two years in Nebraska. I was there for three and a half years. And the Seinfeld stuff happened because I couldn't get an agent. I couldn't get another job. And I just got bored. And my friends would be like, hey, say happy birthday to Tiffany on the newscast. And so I'd be doing like Saints highlights and I'd be like, Drew Brees, drop back and happy birthday, Tiffany, touchdown. <laughs> and they would, they would send me videos of them cracking up. And I was like, what if I do other references? What if I do wrestling? What if I do Seinfeld? Hello, Newman. You know, it's undeniable. Rick Pitino is the most influential man in the history of basketball in the bluegrass. His 96 Kentucky team, dominant like the Moops. His most recent cards, captivating like a red dot on a cashmere sweater. The Hall of Fame did not ask Pitino. They simply said, take the pen. That was back <laughs> when things actually really went viral on the internet and stayed there for like five, six days. And that's how you saw me for the first time. Uh, and that's how Bleacher Report saw me. And so they, they kind of called me up after turning me down originally. And that brought me to Turner and Bleacher Report about eight and a half years ago now. You know, it's so funny. Like Bleacher Report is like, I get all my news from Bleacher Report. We, and when we bought Bleacher Report a few years ago, I was like, why are we buying Bleacher Report? <laughs> and they're like, it's going to be big, Chuck. And now I check it every couple of hours. I refresh it. It, it, you know, and the thing I love about it, uh, I follow up Auburn football mm. and Auburn basketball. That's the only two things I follow. I get breaking and trending. Yeah. I love me some Bleacher Report. They do a fantastic job. I mean, like on a Tuesday, as I'm sure it is a Thursday for Ernie, you are reading so many newspaper headlines. You are scanning the NBA. And the last thing that I want to do is go on Twitter. 
And so the fact that I can get an alert from Bleacher Report that tells me, oh, Joel Embiid's going to be out tonight. Oh, add it to the notes. You know, it's that, that uh, being at that company for that long, the number one thing that gives me value is those alerts, those notifications, because man, the world goes quick. And I, I, I need someone to tap me on the shoulder and let me know what's going on. Yeah, it is. It, it, it's amazing how quickly, you know, every few minutes my phone is beeping. I mean, it's crazy. But let me ask you a couple of basketball questions. Okay. You know, because I did a bunch of press conferences the last yesterday. They're like, well, who's who's, who's going to win the Eastern Conference? I says, I said, hey, man, Milwaukee, Philly, or Brooklyn, I would not be shocked if any one of those three teams won the Eastern Conference. And they said, what about the West? I said, I got zero idea. No idea. Zero, no idea. zero idea who's going to win the West. So what do you think? I think that there is a definite line of demarcation in the East between those three teams and everybody else. But of those three teams, like we have not, we've seen seven games out of Harden, Kyrie, and KD together. And they were great, but only seven. For the Sixers, you are relying on Ben Simmons and Tobias Harris. And as a Sixers fan, I have to be honest, that's scary. And then for the for the Bucks, there's a big part of me that goes, okay, they're four and zero against the Nets and the Sixers since April second. But I want to take them. But if they lose, I'm going to go, oh duh, it's the Bucks in the playoffs. <laughs> We've seen this so many times. So like, I'm not confident in any of them. Yeah. And then in the Western Conference, the prevailing notion in my mind is everyone going. If LeBron and AD are there, it's the Lakers to lose. But we don't know. Like, I was hanging out with Wade the other night, and he goes, you know what this is with LeBron? He's finally getting those normal injuries that we all had to deal with our entire career, and he's just realizing, oh, this is a thing, and I'm going to have to deal with this. I'm going to have to play with a hurt angle. Uh, But I I think in the end, if I had to pick someone, I would probably go with the Nets – just because when they're all healthy, it's the most talent in the NBA. Um, but this is a this is a great year to be in Chuck's world and bet some long shots and some upsets because this is the year, man, to take some of that plus money. They're like Portland, so, Chuck. <laughs> you know, I, Ernie, let me tell you something. I, that team is scary to me. I mean, mm. when they when they play great, they're great. But when they play bad, they're awful. Whether whether they're playing good offensively or not, that defense is still uh, a big hangup. Yeah, yeah, but Adam just said something interesting. Uh, if if LeBron and AD are not healthy, and listen, the notion that they just going to show up and win the championship, total bullshit, total bullshit. First of all, they might be in the playing games. Right. So, they, or, or, or they might play the Clippers or the Nuggets in the first round of the playoffs. The Jazz, I love what they're doing, but they still got to prove it in the playoffs. Is Utah the most complete team? Yeah, but they still got to prove it in the playoffs. Uh, I know they do. I know what they do. But going in, yeah, going in, that team offensively, defensively, off the bench, you got the sixth man of the year. You yes. got Gobert. You got Donovan Mitchell when he comes back. I mean, I, yeah, I just, I just think that that is a complete team, which is a very tough. Hey, we're gonna beat, beat this team four times. Yeah, but I'm going to tell you something. They're, to me, they are the Milwaukee Bucks of the West. Mm. <laughs> they're like, they're terrific. Oh, they lost again in the playoffs. Until they prove that they can win in the playoffs, it doesn't matter if they've had the best record in the West. But I got a question for you, Ernie. Yeah. Uh, Adam, do you get an MVP vote? No. Are you kidding me? No way. Well, Ernie gets one. Ooh. This is going to be. It's crazy. The first month that was probably LeBron. The second month, it was probably Embiid. Injuries are probably taking those two guys out of it. Harden had a run in there, too. No, he did, yeah. Harden was MVP before he got hurt. Great point, Adam. Then then everybody's talking about, well, Giannis is probably playing better than he's ever played. But, but you know, they're going to hold it against uh, Giannis. They're like, we're not going to vote him MVP three times and he don't get four in the playoffs. So they've kind of eliminated him. Then it's like, was well, Jokers to win... And then now people finally jumping on my Chris Paul bandwagon. But Ernie, it is crazy. What you, Adam, number one, I want your opinion. But Ernie, you, I want your opinion also about this MVP thing. Yeah, well, I haven't, I haven't cast a ballot yet. But um, when you get those, you have to rank them like they asked for 
give us your MVP one through five or one or rookie of the year, one through three or the coach of the year one, you know, all that. So, um, and I always wait and wait, uh, you know, I kind of work on it and then it, then I kind of change things around, but, but I, I would go Jokic at this point, I believe. Um, and I think, and I think what he's, he's been able to do with, you know, his run and made Jamal Murray out has been impressive too. And all the triple doubles and playing in every game um, and just doing, you know, doing it all offensively, not a great, you know, he's not a, a great defensive player, but he, you know, Denver runs everything through him and he's, and they're having a great year. So mm -hmm. I, I guess that would be it. I think my biggest my biggest struggle is they're going to be like uh, when you name the all NBA team. Mm. I mean, that's where it's like, okay, is LeBron all NBA is no, all, is LeBron all NBA first team? No, mm. but, but you'd, you'd say, Hey, you know, he's the best player in the game, but, you but he's to... not all in. I know yeah. that's what I'm saying. You've got, there's so many things to weigh, you know? So, so where's he in that you got Jokic Embiid, and Giannis. Okay. So you got to have three front court players. So yeah. So there's, you, you can't put LeBron in there. And who, and who are your backcourt guys? Okay, Steph Curry. And the who way else? Westbrook's playing, like where do you put West, Westbrook exactly. in Exactly. It's it's very interesting. But I got a question for you, Ernie. You named all those guys. Yeah. Julius Randle. Mm. Yeah. I mean. He's, he's on one of those three uh, all-NBA teams. He has to be. He, oh, no question. But I'm talking about we got to figure out how high does he go. Can you put him in there with – Embiid, no. Jokic, and Anadokounmpo? He is not a first-team All-NBA this year. No, but he's, he's not a top-five MVP vote-getter. He, Oh, my goodness. Uh, whew, I don't know. Joker, okay. Embiid, okay. like those two. Okay. Chris Paul. Okay. You're going to put him over Curry? No. Yeah. Uh, man, no, it's, it's, come no, on. Wait a minute. You got to reward winning. We had this argument all the time. Listen, what Steph Curry's doing is incredible. But they're the number 10 seed, Adam, sure. in a fake playoff game. In a fake In the West. Hey, no, in, in, a, West. In, in a fake playoff situation. Don't forget that. Where's Bradley Beal? Bradley Beal is not. Uh, I'm going to put. Is he all NBA? I mean, somewhere, first, second, or third team all NBA? Could be the leading scorer in the NBA, Chuck. Yeah. Yes, yes. I think Bradley Beal is there. But I'm just telling so you. So we're not putting KD in this. We're not putting Harden in this. No. Like, what? No. They, you you penalize those guys for missing games. They're winning. I'm just kidding. Yeah, oh, but man. those guys aren't playing. Oh, so hey, you know, hey, hey, hey Adam, well played. <laughs> hey Adam, we had this argument on the show. I penalize guys. What about for, Booker? Uh, I love Booker, but I'm saying I'm penalizing those guys to answer your first part of your question. I'm penalizing those guys for injuries, Harding and KD. I, so I think it's also tough when you start going, oh wow, Lucas had another great year, and I don't know where to put Luca in all of this too, because his stats are gonna look great. Yeah, but let me tell you something. You know what my dream come true is? What? I'm afraid to I'm afraid yeah, to get the donuts. Answer. What do we got? Uh and let me listen. <laughs> first of all, Spike Lee, Spike Lee, who I love to death, been blowing up my phone. He's been killing me. He's so excited about the Knicks. And it's oh, it is yeah. great for basketball. The Knicks are doing great. But I was looking at the standings, and it's changed in the last couple of days. How about Brooklyn against New York oh, in the oh. second round of the playoffs? How good would that be? It would be special. I mean, that would be so special. Especially because I, what I've always loved from Knicks fans is they've always said, even when they stunk and here come the Nets, if you win – you're never marching down the avenue of heroes, the avenue of, you're never going to be New York's champion. And if the Nets have to go through the Knicks, the Knicks, whoever they face in that second round, if they get through the first, you have to imagine it's going seven. And you have to imagine they are banging them up and getting them tired for that next, like I, a Knicks net series would be special, man. Special. Oh, it, would be, it would be so much great television. Oof. And listen, this notion that, 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 that KD and James are just going to show up and everything's going to be great. We're talking like two weeks away. And let me tell you something. And I said this on the show a couple weeks ago. Nobody wants to see Russell Westbrook and Bradley Beal in a seven-game series. Man, I'm tired of people beating on Russell Westbrook, man. I don't think anyone's beaten on Russell. I think I oh, think no, the no, no. no, they've been they've been really the hard world on has him. Turned. Since. It should have turned a long time ago, Adam. First of all, we all want to win the championship. We all want to win the championship. And Russell Westbrook may never win a championship. But for a man 
to go out there and give 110% every single night, every single night. We don't even appreciate that anymore. Well, because I, I saw some of the bad things people were saying a month ago when he had a monster triple double. Now they're like, oh man, we got to start giving this guy respect. I said, we should have been giving him respect a long time ago. Hey, hey, Chuckster, I actually looked at the metrics the other day and uh, in his last game when he had a triple double, he actually gave 112%. Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah, you and your analytical guys, you know, <laughs> the guys who are running the NBA, these analytical guys, hey, hey you know, Adam, these, uh, you know, all these analytical guys, these guys who own NBA teams want to get a son-in-law a job. So they made up a term called analytics. <laughs> Do you have good analytics? Like when we look back at your career, does the analytics say that you were better than you actually were? Actually, believe it or not. Yes. But so then why do you hate analytics? How do you know that? Somebody tell you the analytics say that? No, no, no. Because I won an NBA award like five or six years in a row. And they, and they didn't call it analytics back then. They just added all the good and the bad together. And I actually won an award. The good and bad together award. Yeah, yeah. No, you I know. remember that. I remember the trophy presentation. It was very emotional. <laughs> is that plus yeah. minus? Was that what it was? Plus good and bad, plus minus? <laughs> yeah, they well, they did a little That's thing. Not really I, I forget what I forget what the what the award was, but I won it like five or six years in a row when I was with the 76 and they're like, we do what you do good and just subtract what you do bad and give you this stupid trophy, which was stupid. So the Sixers gave you the trophy or the league gave no, you no, the no, trophy? No, no, no. The league gave me the trophy. Really? Ernie, isn't it weird that like Shaq, Chuck, they hate the play in tournament, but they say things like you don't want to face Russell Westbrook in a one game situation. Like how exciting is it going to be that Russell Westbrook is going to be playing in one game? You win or you go home. Like this is, this is a dream. Steph Curry in a win or go home situation. Like this is going to be incredible. Yeah, but Adam, the, the only problem I have with the play in stuff is the play in teams. First of all, they're, they're mediocre or bad teams first. Let's get that out the way. And they have to play the right to get to play the best team in basketball in East or West. So, yeah, that this, this playoff thing scenario is interesting for one game. But then you says, uh-oh, now we got to play the Utah Jazz or Brooklyn, Milwaukee, who's going to be the number one seed. Yeah. That's my only problem. Like your reward is getting to get killed in the next, in the real playoff. You get a chance. Well, I know, but well, you, normally but, you wouldn't even be in. First of all, you don't have a chance. <laughs> when you're the seven, eight, nine, ten 10 seed, you're not going to beat the number one seed. Uh, look, it, to me, it's just a, it's a nice little warm up for the playoffs and somebody's going to get that winner go home feeling right away. And after all this time in the regular season, I'm ready for something like that. Yes. I'm ready for some finality. And and um, so let's just see what happens. I don't know if it's going to go past this, how it's going to go past this season, because it's a one year, you know, they're looking at it. They did it last year in the bubble. They're doing it this year on a one year basis. And then let's see if they tinker with it. Let's see if, you know, to me, if you're, if you're number seven, but you're up by five games over the eight team, you shouldn't have to play your way in. But if, if you're all bunched up, maybe there's a way you look at it and say, hey, look, if, if, if the teams that are within this of each other get in, maybe you do it that way, but, but we'll see. Hey, look, that's a lot of hoop talk. Let's talk about your impending marriage, oh. okay? Um, this, is, this is two weeks away? Yeah, I feel like we're like 15 days away now. <laughs> yeah. oh. How involved are you in the planning, and are you ready to elope? Well... Smartest thing I did, I have to whisper because she's in the other room. Smartest thing I did was her birthday was in January and I gave a very big gift. And I, I don't really don't go that big. And I said, I just want to give this to you because I love you and to thank you in advance for handling so much of the wedding in these next few months as I have to get ready for my job. Wow. And I, so and I think it kind of worked. Uh, because I haven't been too involved. I I whenever I get asked a question, I say yes is my new thing. So it's like, what do you think about this? And I go, yeah, that sounds great. And then, cause she knows what she wants to do. And so she's going to do it anyway. But Ernie, I will say, um, I had a chance. My wedding shower was this past weekend and I got a chance to see my grandmom for the first time in like two years. Wow. And I got to see my mom and then I got to see her mom with my mom. And it was, women are just a better 
species in general. And to be around those people and to see the joy on their faces, I was like, you know what? I haven't seen my people in a long time together. And so I'm, I'm very excited for that. Uh, in terms of paying these people, eloping sounds great. You know, that, that sounds really, really nice. But in terms of like seeing family together and the fact that, God bless it, that New York is changing all of the rules like three days before the wedding to like, hey, you guys can actually come together now. You didn't have to be in your zone. So we're, we're getting very lucky with that. But um, Ernie gave me the best advice. I haven't been able to use the line yet. Uh, no one's asked me how long we've been together. I can't wait to use it. Ugh. But I'm, I'm, I'm ready to cry like a baby. Yeah. I'm going to be a mess. I'm going to be like Chuck at his daughter's wedding. Hold on, I just threw up a... Can you just uh, repeat that little line that Ernie it's said? It's so good. Okay, so you're in a social setting. You got people milling, milling around, and and they and so Ernie, how long have you and Cheryl been married? And and I look at Cheryl Ann, and I look back at the person who asked the question, and I said, "Not long enough." <sighs> I can't wait. I can't wait Goose to bumps. use it. Goosebumps for you, Chuckster, yeah. right? Goosebumps. Yeah. Okay. Chuckster. That was so cheesy. No, it's not. A, it works, man. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. It's like, oh, that was so nice what you said. Go play 18. Mm. Hey, I will. I might play 36. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> no, but it, it, what's been funny is every Tuesday I come in and Shaq goes, hey, how long until the wedding? And I go, oh, 28 days. And then he looks over at Wade almost every time and he goes, hey, Wade. Isn't it crazy? This dude's like really excited to get married. Man, that's nuts. <laughs> like he's always like blown away that I'm like super excited to get married. It's very funny. Oh, that is hilarious. Do you guys have any advice for me for the day? Just enjoy it, brother. It's it's her. Okay. It's her special day. Well, it's a special day for everybody. Yeah, yeah. but it's it, it, but it's it, you know for the bride. Yeah. It was like my daughter. Don't do anything to screw up her special day. I just wanted, yeah, I just like, I wanted this to, this to be the best day in her life. Mm. You know, I, I tried as hard as I could to just, it, 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 she was so excited for it. And I obviously, I know your wife is also. Just, man, this makes sure it's perfect for her. Cause I mean, cause women take these things way more serious than us dudes do. <laughs> so I am going to be lifted up in the chair. We are doing the horror. Yeah. Chuck, any advice for balance? Uh, who brother, to pick? Listen, we're like boxers, brother. We're in different weight classes, so you're going to be all right. Is your wedding indoor or outdoor? Uh, the wedding itself is going to be outdoor, yeah. I just hope you get perfect weather. Man, I do too. So I have, I have Ernie's amazing book on Audible, and I re-listened to the part where he was talking about him and his son getting married. And, and the fact that you or you had the same experience with your father with the best man and and given that mug and and all that and i just i i can't wait to see my pops cry cuz i know it's going to happen yeah. that that's the thing i'm i'm a sap when i see it impact other people oh yeah and so when i see my mom and my dad that's going to be the like that's going to make me cry because you realize like it's an entire family thing like this is and i'm also like the oldest of all of the cousins on both sides of my family. So it's all going to be these young people. And I'm one of the first one. My brother got married already, but I can't wait to see the emotions, man. I'm a sad. So let me ask you, let me ask you a question. Is Ernie just as boring in person uh, as, as he is in audio? I'm just yeah. asking. No, uh, I think actually he has little moments where I feel like he adds some stuff that wasn't actually in the book or like, he'll be like, like the way that he reads it. I'm like, man, I feel like he's right there. He's good, Chuck. I'm, I'm going to oh. be, your audio book, uh, while it would be a picture book, uh, would be a little <laughs> bit tough. But Ernie's is great. I was, it was uh, I read that thing word for word just as I wrote it. And it was, but it was tough. Oh, so natural. It was tough because um, even though I had written every word, it was like, man, when you're saying this into the mic, and there were times we kind of had to pause and I say, hey, give me five minutes before I jump into this chapter. And but the, what you're talking about with Eric um, was really cool because, yeah, I had given my dad, my dad was my best man, and I had given him the mug that said my best man, my best friend, and it was always, it always sat on the mantle at uh, at his house, and then, and then Eric kind of, you know, a half hour before the ceremony with Quinn, he kind of motions to me, says, hey, you got a second, pulls me into this room, and Hey, I got you a little something. And man, I opened that thing and I, 
Oh, and here it is. Here, here's his own version. And I take this mug out. It's got the same thing written on it. And it's like, no, that's, it doesn't get any better than that, Adam. Yeah. And that's the, those, those days when you get married or your kids get married, you know, you know, being my, you know, walking my daughter down the aisle. It, those are just, they're, they're priceless. Uh, they're mm. treasures. And so uh, it's going to be a treasure for you that day too, man. So I appreciate Remember, it. catalog every, every moment, keep saying yes, and don't screw up her big day. Yeah. I'm going to be taking mental snapshots. <laughs> the entire. You're right. I just, my, my fear, cause I, it's, it'll be Jewish. So there's going to be a moment where I have to crush the glass. And if I miss, oh man, did he, did Chuck, yes. did that, did yes. your son in nailed and it? And the rabbi was like, don't be afraid to stomp it. Cause it's hard to break apparently. Yeah. yeah. Oh, can you imagine yeah. I slip and fall? Oh, I can't do that. I don't need to be on Shackton for my wedding. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Adam Lefko, man, always good. Always good spending time with you, brother. It's uh, wonderful having you as a teammate, and and we wish you the best on the on the upcoming huge day in your life. Mm. Um, I know you'll do great. I appreciate you guys. You guys have been such good friends, uh, such good advisors, such good people to just have in my life. And uh, you know, I would say that I'm a, that I, 